Hello friends, today I'll talk about how to do the HADR setup. This tutorial is intended for the beginners and we would be learning to do the HADR setup in less than 10 minutes. As usual, this tutorial is on DB2 version 11.5. So to set up the HADR, what we need is on the primary side, we'll create the primary database. If you have already have a database and you want to configure that database, that is also fine. Then you, we need to set up some of the HDR parameters. If the database is not in the archival log, we need to set the log up math one parameter. We need to take the backup and we need to copy the backup to standby. Once this is done on the primary, we go and what the backup that we copied, we will take that backup and restore that backup on the standby, but we will not do the roll forward. Once we do, once we restore the database, then we will update some of the HDR parameters and we will start the HDR as standby, first on the standby, and then we'll go to the primary and start the HDR as primary and verify the HDR. So let me repeat, if the database is not there, you create the database, you update the HDR parameters, you set the log math one parameter to convert the database from circular logging to archival logging, you take the backup, you copy the backup, you restore the backup, but do not roll forward. You update the HDR parameters. You start the HDR standby and start the HDR as primary and then verify. Remember that what I'm trying to do here today is I am going to do everything on one node. So people will think that you need to have two machines. I'm not going to have two machines. I'm going to set up my HDR on the same machine with two different instance name. You heard it right. You can have an HADR with two different H instance name. So my primary, okay. So the, my primary would be db2p and my standby would be db2s. So on the same server, I would use two different instances with two different names to configure the HADR. Why would I do that? So this particular tutorial is intended for learning and it is not real time. So Many of us do not have a powerful machine or powerful laptop. We have only 8 GB of RAM. What we can do is we can create a VM, allocate 4 GB to that virtual machine so that we have 4 GB left for the windows. And within that 4 GB, you can have two instances running with HADR setup. And that is absolutely fine. So let's understand. We need to set up some of these parameter HADR parameters, local host, on the primary refers to the local machine on the remote it would refers to the the where the remote database is running in my case if you see what what is on the local on primary becomes the remote on standby similarly what is remote on primary becomes local on standby the service this is hdr service this is the hdr port and this is not the instance port this is the remote instance and this is the sync mode we need to update the parameters on the primary. Then we will be taking the backup and we will be standby, restoring on the standby. And when we restore on the standby, the parameters that because we took the backup after setting the parameters, those parameters will be like this. So what we need to do is we need to update those parameters back again on the standby to reverse them in this order. Now, since I'm doing it on same machine, my parameters would be this this because my host remains the same and rest all the parameters would differ. So now I said less than 10 minutes. I don't know how much time I have covered, but let me, I have set up one script. What does that script does is like it first connects to instance db2p, then it creates a database and then it sets those parameters, which I explained. Then it converts the database into our so it set up this parameter to convert the database from circular logging to archival logging. It takes the backup, then it restores the backup. It, and then I connect to the second instance, restores the backup. And then once the backup is restored, I update the HADR parameters. And on the standby, I start HADR as standby. And on primary, I start HADR as primary. Now, Let's run this particular script. And what I'll do is I'll launch two putty sessions.
yeah so i have launched two sessions and here i connected as db to p here i have connected as db to s and as usual i am on version 11.5 version 11.5 and this instance is sorry that was yeah this instance is db to s and this instance is db to p and let me show you if i have any database right now and looks like i don't have any database on the primary side and i don't have any database on the standby side as well so this script that i'm going to run this particular script is going to set up the hdr i'll repeat is going to create the database so create database then update the hdr parameters then convert the database from circular logging to archival logging using log arcmat parameter take the backup restore the backup update the hdr parameters on the standby start hdr as standby start hdr as primary and then we will take a look at the status so let me run this particular script and here is setup hdr and i'll say i want to set up for the database called db hdr so this is the name that i'm passing to this particular script this particular script is going to take this particular name and then it's going to set up the hdr so let me hit that and while it is doing that i'll launch another session here with a time and this one 42940 so the script must have started at 42930 or approximately so let's see how much time the script is going to take and it's creating the right database right now i could launch one more session and show you db2diac.f it's right now is creating the database because that's the first command the create database and that is the command that is the only command which is going to take the maximum time out of this particular script now while it is doing that i'll go here again the steps to configure the hdr is you create the primary database you update the hdr parameters you update the log arc math one parameter to convert the database from circular to archival to you take the backup you copy the backup to standby in my case since i am doing it on the same machine and this step is not required you restore the backup but do not roll forward you update the hdr parameters you start the hdr as standby and you start the hdr as primary on primary and you verify the hdr so let's see still now my database is not created the script started okay the database is created so see 430 uh and i think we started at 429 close to so let's give it a minute now we are switched to so the previously we did it on db to p instance the database was created initially system directory is empty create database successful now we have got this database then on standby we did the restore where is the restore restore and then after that previously system database directory is empty we did the restore and then we updated some of the parameters and right now it is running the start hdr command so start hdr on standby and then it's going to run the start hdr on primary if it is successful obviously yeah that also successful and let's verify so on the db2p hdr database role is primary primary peer connected and on the standby db2s it is standby peer connected and i got the role as standby so and if you see here at the last it says setup of hdr took 142 seconds or approximately 2 minutes 22 seconds and yes we can see because i started at 429 odd and right now it is 432 so close to 2 minutes 22 seconds it the script took and that easy is to set up the hdr so if you know what you are doing if you create a script what i have done then you can always build your hdr in few minutes let me repeat what i have done here this parameters i'll explain later this parameter i'll explain later what i'm what i'm what are the important parameters are this and this parameters have been set up with these values so the local host because i have done it on the same machine the local host for both these instance or both the databases is same the remote host is also same 
the this is the listening port for hdr on the local on the primary this is the this is the tcp ip port or the hdr port on the standby this is the remote instance this is the remote instance so here it is db to p here it is db to s and i am saying hdr sync mode so once you have learned this so now that our hdr is set up what we can do about with it so let's learn the hdr commands so there are three hdr commands that are used to manage hdr start hdr stop hdr take over hdr we have already done this particular bit where what we have done if you see the script first i went onto the standby and i said start hdr as standby and then on primary start hdr as primary if you want to stop the hdr you just replace the start with stop that's all you do so stop hdr and the third command is take over hdr when you, when you want to fail over from primary to standby sorry from the standby to primary sorry primary to standby you want to make the standby primary that time you will be running this particular command the start hdr command can be ran at both it can be ran at primary as well as standby but preferably you run it first on standby but there is no hard and fast rule you can run the start hdr command on primary first there is nothing stopping you you can if you want to run the start hdr on primary go ahead do it there is no problem the stop hdr it can be run on both and take over hdr this command you cannot run on the standby it has sorry it cannot be run on the primary it has to be done only on the standby now the syntax of the command is start hdr on database database alias as primary if you want to start the hdr on standby you will say as standby if you want to start the primary with force you will say by force if you want to stop stop the hdr you will say stop hdr and if you want to take the take over the hdr you will say take over hdr on database and if you want to do the by force if the primary is not available if it is primary is not reachable then you would be using the by force command to do the takeover but once you do the by force that time the old primary which is now of no use you have to destroy it and recreate from the new primary which was your old standby so remember to avoid using by force command when you are doing the takeover but again there might be situation where you will have to use this but be careful that this if you do this your primary you will have to recreate now how to monitor the hdr there are two methods to monitor the hdr you can use the db2pd command or you can use the monget hdr so the db2pd command is what i have already used in the script but let me just show it to you db2pd minus db db hdr minus hdr this is my database name and i'm saying i'm giving the option minus hdr and this is on the primary and let me do this on standby and on the standby here standby physical sync peer connected so it gives us a lot of the information and on the primary it would say it is primary physical sync peer so and then it will tell us what is the standby instance what is the heartbeat connected so literally a lot of the information there are there is another method that you can use and that is monget hdr so you can use this particular command to retrieve the data about hdr so you can use the mon get hdr table function what i can do is i can run this i have not set up the script for this so this one it wouldn't work i don't know whether it will work like this but let me try yeah so it gives what is the current role it is primary standby id is 1 hdr status peer what is the primary host and what is the standby host and as i said i have done everything the primary and the standby is running on the same machine with a different instance name and that's why i got the same host in the primary and the standby and if i run this command on the standby i would get the hdr role as standby okay so right so i got standby peer db1 and 
db1 and primary so i can use the mon get hdr there are other values which you can get from the mon get hdr i suggest you to take a look at the ibm documentation so this was a short tutorial to understand how to set up the hdr and we we have if you create a script what i have done this it might take some time for you to come up with the script but once you set up the script then you can rerun this particular script again and again and it's going to work 100% for you what i can do for you is i can delete my hdr so i'll i have something called delete hdr so let me delete that hdr so i am script to delete hdr so what it's going to do is going to drop the hdr database on primary it is going to drop the hdr database on standby and it's it's going to clean up my environment what i'll do again see it's going to drop the primary database so db to start so this is the database db hdr okay so what i did not do is i did not pass the name to that script so that's my mistake let me kill this script yeah so i should pass the script expects me to tell which database to drop so let's let me do that and while it is doing that what i want to show you is the steps again to set up the hdr create the primary database update the hdr parameters update the log act method one parameter to convert it to the archival logging take the backup copy the backup restore the backup on standby update the hdr parameters start the hdr as standby and then start the hdr as primary on the pri primary and verify the hdr to verify the hdr we can use either the db2pd or we can use the mon get hdr command there are other ways also which i have not shown but there are other ways the three hdr commands that you ever want to know is start hdr stop hdr take over hdr take over hdr you can only run it on standby start hdr as primary on primary start hdr as standby on standby stop hdr you can run on both the sides now once this is done so if if you okay so let's see okay so let's see now so let me db2 get instance so i should be i mean db2 so let me check db2 list db directory and i don't have any database so let me go here and okay and let me run the same command and i don't have anything so whatever setup i did i just destroyed it now what i'll do is one again i will run this particular script the initial script okay set up hdr and pass this name this particular database name and this particular script is going to create the db hdr database once again so and it's going to set up the hdr and let's see how much time it takes and while the script is doing that i will follow with the next part of this tutorial so this particular tutorial was not only how to set up the hdr but i just wanted to explain what is hdr so the db2 hdr is an high availability disaster disaster recovery feature which is which is a db2 eligibility feature for high availability and disaster recovery it replicates data in real time from primary to one or more standby and remember here one or more standby database the db2 allows you to have three standby databases hdr is based on log replay the primary ships is transaction log data to standby via tcp connection the standby continuously replaces the log record to keep itself in sync with the primary so do you need a shared storage no you don't need a shared storage the the shipping of the logs from the primary to the standby goes via that tcp ip connection and the standby receives those those logs and replaces those logs continuously in sync with the primary now the sync word is here important because we have the sync port which will define how the standby will sync with the primary but at this moment just remember that the primary would ship the logs or send the logs to the standby via tcp connection tcp ip connection and standby continuously replace those logs 
what are the system requirements the database there are some requirements which are must and then there are okay let's see okay so let's give it a minute and wait and before i move on to the next part of the tutorial i just wanted to show you some that my hdr is really working so what we'll do is like we'll do some kind of testing so to do the testing we will take a look at what is my database role let me clear this so this is dv to s and here it is standby so my hdr is again it took 143 seconds 2 minutes 23 seconds so that's that's the time that it took to set up the hdr so so this is the primary this is a standby so what we will do is we will learn how to do the takeover so the takeover command cannot be initiated on the primary it has to be initiated on the standby so let me try to do the takeover on primary takeover hdr takeover cannot complete reason code 4 and if i look at why what is this reason code 4 the command is not supported on standard or hdr primary and right now the database is primary and since it is primary this command failed now let's run the same command on the standby before doing that let me clear the screen and show you the status and run this particular command and while it is doing let's take a look so from primary it went to standby and now let's see what would be the status here and while it is doing that we'll use this get hdr status command okay this wouldn't work actually because it needs database name right so let's not do that okay so and from standby it changed to primary and from primary it changed to standby and so my takeover which i initiated on the standby so you have to remember that takeover has to be initiated on the standby and if the primary is available then you will use the normal takeover if the primary is not available then you will use the by force option to convert the standby to primary now the takeover is working so looks like let's not let's figure out whether i'm peer connected so peer connected everything looks good so let me clear my screen and what we'll do is we'll create one table on the standby so before creating the table let me connect to the primary and what we will do is we will select from this particular table and we don't have this particular table so now let me create this particular table here and that's successful and let's see if the table is so the table that we created on db2s has appeared on db2p so the looks like table ddl command is getting replicated that the table creation is a ddl command now let's fire let's insert a value into that particular table so we have inserted and let's do the select from here and we see that the record we inserted here the one test one and i did not pass the value for c3 because i set that particular value to be default c3 timestamp current timestamp so whatever whenever i inserted the record that appeared here so now let me insert one more record on the standby sorry on the primary and let me check if that record also appeared and i got now two records one and two so let me try to delete the first record on the primary and let's see if that so now i have deleted c1 is equal to 1 and i have left so my insert is my table creation works my insert works my delete works so my hdr seems to be working fine now we'll go to the theory part so to to set up the hdr you need to have you need to have some requirements such as the database name on primary and standby should be same you cannot have the database name of the primary and standby different you have to have the same database name 
the primary and standby must have the same db2 major version which means you can you can you cannot replicate between 10.1 and 10.5 or two different db2 versions it has to be either 10.5 or 11.1 or 11.5 so the major version should be same the standby database fixed level must be same or higher so standby fixed pack level should be either the same as of the primary or should be higher than uh, that of primary the db2 software on primary and standby must have the same bit size so if the db2 on primary is 64 bit the standby also should have 64 bit or the, the if it is 32 bit it should be 32 bit primary and standby must have the same platform so you can have windows linux aix etc so you can you can have uh, you you cannot you cannot have the primary on windows and standby on linux or the primary on linux and standby on aix the two hosts should be either windows either linux or either aix but you cannot mix and match them the primary and standby must have the same endian and if you if this requirement is met then this requirement is also met automatically now there are some requirements which are recommended but not enforced such as instance name can be different in my case the primary is db2p and the standby is db2s so you can see the instance name can be different same os version so you can have windows but it is you can have the primary running at windows service pack windows 2012 service pack 1 and windows 2012 service pack 2 so you can have a slight different it is not recommended but it is okay so you re recommended is you need to make sure that both have the same update same, same fixed pack level same service pack level everything but you can have slightly different same bit size on the host platform is recommended but not enforced which means what i'm trying to say here is windows 64 bit and windows 64 bit but if you if you have the db2 32 bit installed on windows 64 bit on primary then you can have windows 32 bit on standby because you are having db2 32 bit so you can have 64 bit on uh, os on primary and 32 bit os on standby provided you are using the 32 bit db2 but you cannot have different db2 bit size the db2 bit size should be same but the os bit size can be different now primary and standby must have the same paths this is recommended so if you ever if you are never going to create a table space ever again then you can you can have the primary and standby in a different path like but it is not recommended because i, I i'm 100 sure you once you set up the database you would need to create some table spaces and all that stuff and then if you don't have the same pass the table space creation is going to fail then lastly same hardware cpu and memory and disk you need to make sure that the hardware on the primary and standby is same it is recommended but not enforced so you can have the primary much powerful and standby very less powerful now the why the the primary powerful because applications would be connecting to the primary not the standby provided you have not configured the read on standby which is a different concept altogether but let's for right now to understand we'll think that all the connections are hitting the primary and since everything all the applications are connecting to the primary you have a powerful primary and the standby is not so powerful but remember that standby should be enough powerful to apply the locks so it should not fall back it should not fall behind so it should be enough whatever logs the primary is sending on the standby standby should be enough powerful to apply those logs now what is replicated so whatever ddl so whatever the table creation the table drop that was a ddl so that gets replicated database manipulation any insert update delete that gets replicated any buffer pool operation gets replicated create table space alter table space drop table space gets replicated reorganization online gets replicated offline gets replicated and what is not replicated so some of the options which are not logged operations they are allowed on the primary database but they are not replicated such as if you create a table with not logged initially it will not get replicated any changes to the database configuration that you do on the primary that will not be replicated any changes that you do the dbm configuration to the instance that will not get replicated 
any user defined functions which are changes to objects external to database such as objects and library files will not be replicated the recovery history file and changes to it are not automatically shipped so changes to recovery history file will not be replicated now let's understand the hadr parameters there are six configuration parameters that you need to set for the hadr the hadr local host the remote host local service remote service remote instance and the sync mode the local host is the local server of the hadr the remote host is where the remote database is running the local service is the local tcp ip hadr port this is not the instance port this is the dedicated port for the hadr remote port for the hadr remote service hadr remote instance and the sync mode and the sync mode determines how fast the standby will act so what is whether the primary will wait for the standby it it depends on this particular sync mode optionally you would set up the hadr timeout parameter which will the hadr process will wait before it will think that the hadr communication has failed and that is why this particular parameter will allow if you have set let's say 2 minutes or 120 seconds for this particular parameter then you can start the hadr on the primary before starting the hadr on standby so let me do that so what i'll do is now right now i'll just stop let me deactivate this particular database okay so if i deactivate and activate so let me stop the hadr so let me stop the hadr on standby first use stop database cannot complete okay to hdr okay right so let me let's man let me do this over here and let me now deactivate this particular database and let me show you i don't have this particular on the standby this is my primary so so hdr is not active and if i say db to get db and if i do this here on the standby also it is not active so the here the database is active but the database and let me now deactivate this particular database and let me i think it's already been deactivated so no problem so now what i'll do is i will start the hdr on primary first so and this particular database on standby this is my standby right now is i have not started the hdr and this particular command i have started this command is going to wait for the till the time it doesn't reach the hdr timeout the, the value which is set in this particular value parameter so it want it will wait so you can start the primary first is there is no harm but remember that before it times out you have to start the hdr on the standby so let's do that and as soon as the standby comes the primary is going to come online and is going to integrate with the standby and that's done and you see here 
So this command was waiting for the standby. As soon as the standby came, the primary got integrated with the standby. So remember that it is advisable to start the standby first, but it is not mandatory. You can start the primary first and then you can go and start the HADR and you have to start the HADR before the timeout set in the HADR. HADR replay delay specifies that a transaction committed on the standby must pass the transaction is committed from the standby to the if, if you can read this that try so basically you are, what we are saying is like it will wait replay delay means the transaction will wait so it will let's say if you have set the transaction replay delay as one hour the transaction which is initiated on the primary will be only replicated on the standby after one hour so you can set it for three 60 into 60 60 seconds into 60 minutes you can set that parameter with that value and then whatever value you set it will wait for that particular time and it will apply the logs only after this particular value is reached so you can have the standby which is behind the primary now what are the synchronization modes here is the parameter called sync mode so there are there are four synchronization modes sync near sync async and super sync this being the best okay less okay worst now this is the best means you will always have the primary and standby in the sync synchronized so there would be no data loss you will ever face with this particular mode but this particular will have the performance problems what so this mode provides the greatest protection against the transaction loss and using it results in the longest transaction response. Why longest? Because the, the standby in this, not only the logs has to be up, written to the standby, but the even the standby has to give the acknowledgement they have been written to the standby log files. So as long as it is the log files from the primary needs to be sent to the standby and standby needs to write them to the log files and then once the standby says i have written them to the log file it will send the confirmation back to the to the primary and then only the primary will issue the commit and that is why it will have the longest transaction response but remember that it will also have the best protection because here it is guaranteed that whatever logs have been sent from the primary they have been received by the standby and they have been returned to the log files. So it will always give you that 100% protection that other modes cannot give. The sec next option is near sync. It has slightly lesser uh, response time than the sync mode, but again, less protection. What happens here is only when the log been returned to the primary and it just on the standby it just waits for the acknowledgement it is not it is not that it has to be written if it if the standby has returned it to the mem memory part not the actual log files even if it has returned to the memory then standby is going to say i have received the logs go ahead and issue the commit to the transaction and then you you will have the the primary issuing the commit statement or passing that transaction have been successful but what have, have happened is like in this mode, the standby has just received it in memory and it has not at returned to log file. And it is slightly less productive than the sync mode, but it will give you better performance. The next one is async mode. In this mode, it doesn't even wait for the for the standby. It just it ha, it sends the log, and once it has sent the log to the standby on the TCP IP it will it will primary will th think that my work is done and let me issue the commit and this is this will have the shorter response time than sync and near sync but it will have also the lesser production against the those two the super sync is the last mode and it is one of the highest probability of transaction losses because in this mode the hadr can never be in peer state and doesn't wait the parameter doesn't wait the, stand, the primary doesn't even wait for the standby the remember that hadr sync mode if i show you in the beginning 
the icap the hidr sync mode same the sync and sync what the value here can be async and value here can be sync then if the values are different what would be the actual synchronization mode the actual synchronization mode would be what is the value on the standby so whatever is the value on the standby that is actually the effective stand synchronization mode not the value on the primary so remember so if you configure async and sync and you think that the database is going to operate in async mode no it's going to operate in the sync mode now when this becomes primary becomes the standby that time it will start operating so when this becomes standby that time this will be async and that time the database will start operating in the async mode so remember that whatever is the value of the sync mode hdr sync mode on the standby is actual sync uh, synchronization mode of your hdr database now let's okay so where are we so yeah we covered the so there are four synchronization modes sync near sync async and super sync and sync being the best followed by near sync followed by async with super sync being the worst now the hdr commands the start hdr it is only on the primary uh, sorry it can be issued on primary or on the standby if you are issuing on the hdr primary you will say start hdr as primary if you are issuing it on the standby it will you will say the issue it as a start hdr as standby stop hdr it can be run on both it will convert the database from from the hdr to standard database take over hdr can only be issued on the standby and you will use the by force option when the primary is not available other hdr concepts remember in my script i set these two parameters the standby iso and standby hdr ros the ros stands for read on standby and this parameter since i have turned on you can read the the transactions read the data on the standby so with this particular parameter and this is the iso level of the standby so you are for uncommitted read so you are reading the data on standby in uncommitted read mode and this two parameters will allow you to do the read on standby so read on standby is an functionality in db2 luw which allows us to read the data from standby so why would you do that so let's say you have couple of applications and some of the applications are just reading the data why would you load your primary why can't you pass some of your connections to the standby and then you have some load on the standby also the next concept is delayed replay as i mentioned what is delayed replay is you will allow the transaction to be delayed by the time which in set in this particular parameter hdr replay delay this particular parameter you will set and by whatever parameter value that you have set in that particular parameter the standby will receive the log after that particular time has passed rolling updates and upgrades allows us you to update the hdr in such a way that you don't have to you are the database can be up and running for the application and you do not cause any outage so you can do the rolling update and upgrade automatic client request with hdr so let's say you have primary on host 1 and standby on host 2 and the applications are normally connected to host 1 so what happens if the primary fails over to standby then do they do we tell the application to change the connection settings no we have a feature called automatic client reroute if you enable and that there is something called update alternate server and if you set that particular parameter or if you configure that then automatically whenever the hdr is going to fail over the application is also going to fail over from the primary to standby the other recommended parameters make sure to set the login index build to on so whenever you create the indexes on primary and standby you that particular operations are completely logged so those since they are completely logged the standby is are is applying those index creation up deletion or reorganization whatever operations happening on the index that's get replicated the index rack parameter so whenever you set this particular parameter to restart so if there are any invalid indexes when the takeover happens the db2 is going to look at those index invalid indexes and it's going to rebuild those indexes now the final thing is load operations and hdr now remember that 
the the load is not the load is minimally logged which means you have to make sure that you use the option called copy yes and when you do that particular option you have to keep the the file the load file whatever it is in the in the shared path so the prime the standby whenever it sees the load command is going to take this particular path is going to go at that particular path and it's going to execute that load command and the standby would not be not be having to do that load is not replicated but if the load you have you have set the load with copy yes but for some reason the standby could not access the path which was specified in the load command then that particular table space in which table is stored is marked invalid and any future records for that particular table space are skipped then if you issue the load cup command with non recoverable parameter then what happens is like that particular table is marked invalid any future log records for that table are skipped you can issue load command with copy as yes and replace to bring the table back or you can drop the table to recover the space so so remember that in in case of load operations you, you make sure you use the copy yes op option and if you use the non recoverable then the uh, one thing that you can do is you can say copy as yes and replace or you can drop the table this was the tutorial on hdr i hope you found it useful in the beginning i tried to cover how to set up the hdr and then once you know how to set up the hdr i try to explain the concept of hdr such as the what is rep, what is hdr what is the mandatory system requirements what is what is recommended but not enforced there is a spelling mistake here and what is replicated what is not replicated what are the configuration hdr configuration parameters what are the synchronization modes and then what are the hdr commands that you would need to know what are the other hdr concepts interesting hdr concepts and what are the recommended hdr parameters and how the load behaves in the hdr i hope this tutorial was useful thank you for watching see you in next video bye bye